What's going on everybody? Welcome to Arrival Entertainment and today we're going to be talking about Firestarter, the newest Stephen King adaptation. Firestarter is a remake of the 1984 film of the same name and it's also an adaptation of the book Firestarter written by Stephen King. And before I get started with the review, since I'm experimenting with green screen technology, let me mix it up a little bit just for this review. There we go, much better. So when it comes to Firestarter, I haven't read the book from Stephen King, but I have seen the original movie, which I bought on Blu-ray a couple years ago because I heard they were gonna be remaking it. I found this at Walmart, so I picked it up just because it was super cheap and I wanted to see the original before I saw the new one. And when it comes to the original, I know there's a lot of fans of it out there. A lot of people are nostalgic about the original Firestarter movie, but I was not really that impressed with it. It's got some good moments in it, and the chemistry between the father and daughter in the movie is really strong, but I, for me, the movie just came off as boring, and I wasn't really that invested on what was going on in between the story outside of the father and daughter's chemistry. It just didn't grab me, so I was hoping with a remake of this movie, those problems could be fixed a little bit. And I liked that Blumhouse was producing this movie. They do good job and bad job with horror movies. I've seen some crappy horror movies from them, but I've also seen some really great movies from them. So I didn't know how this movie was gonna pair up. Like I said, I wasn't a huge fan of the original. I was hoping this movie would be better and it really isn't. I think I liked this movie just about as much as I liked the original. I wouldn't say this movie's terrible. It just didn't work for me. But let's start with what I liked about the movie first. I liked Zac Efron and Ryan Kira Armstrong. They had good chemistry, I thought, in the movie for the most part. And I liked that most of the beginning of the movie, you see more of the family interacting with each other because I'm, that's something that I wouldn't say it was glossed over in the original, but didn't really focus on all that much in the original. You saw a little bit of flashbacks with the family before Andy and Charlie go on the run, but this one, they expanded out a lot more, which, I really liked a lot, I'm not gonna lie. The beginning of this movie, I would say the first 20 minutes or so, or however long the that stuff lasts, I genuinely liked, and I saw the reviews before I saw the movie, and while I was watching the beginning, I kept saying to myself, people didn't like this so far, this is a pretty good setup, it was well done for the most part. And then Andy and Charlie go on the run in this movie, and that's where the problems really start to become apparent for me. Let me just say this, like I said, I wasn't a huge fan of the original movie, it came off as a little boring for me, it didn't really grab my interest, but for as long as that movie is, it's, it's an almost two hour movie, I can't say it did take its time with the characters and the situation that the characters are in, and it did flesh it out. Sure, I thought it wasn't paced all that well, but at least it fleshed it out. This movie, once Andy and Charlie go on the run, it just, goes so fast to the ending. It's an hour and a half long. It's like 90 some minutes, 93 minutes, something like that with credits. And I got worried when I saw that because like I said, the original is almost two hours long. And I was like, how are they gonna cram everything that the original did and more, possibly more stuff from the book that wasn't in the original into an hour and a half long movie? Well, of course, I kind of knew the answer to that. This is a new adaptation of a book, so creative liberties have to be made. And, I, and I'm not someone that takes creative liberties like that to heart. You know, a lot of people get pissed off with the Harry Potter movies that they changed so much from the books. I'm not like that at all. I understand that if you're gonna adapt something, you gotta change some stuff. You gotta take some stuff out or maybe add some stuff that wasn't in the source material to flesh it out the movie better and to make it more coherent for the movie. And even though I haven't read the book, I can safely say that if you're a fan of this book, you're probably gonna get pissed off with a lot of things that they do in this movie, especially with the second and third act. So this movie does ignore things that happened in the original movie, and I'm pretty sure it ignores things that happened in the book, but there's also some things that I just don't understand why they did it and why they did it in a certain way. For instance, the character played by Michael Grays, Gray Eyes, I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name, I hope I said one of those correctly. His character in the movie kind of starts out as almost like the Terminator. But then they do something at the end of the movie with his character that completely confused me. And I thought it was just me. I thought to myself, maybe I'm missing something from the book and they got it from the book and added it to this movie, but I looked up some stuff about that what happened and apparently a lot of other people are confused about it too. I don't know what they were thinking with that, but instead of an ending that was satisfying to me, I just got more confused and I don't know if they're planning a sequel for this movie, 
But yeah, I am very, very confused about that ending. So in all honesty, the stuff that I really liked in the movie was the beginning 20 minutes or so when we get to see more of the family together. And I liked Zac Efron and Ryan Kira Armstrong. I thought they had good chemistry for the most part. Everything else was just kind of meh, didn't really care for it, or just pretty bad. Also, Kurt Wood Smith is in this movie, and without spoiling it, they completely wasted him. And I was so disappointed what they did with his character, and I was so disappointed on what they did with just him in general in the movie. Like, he deserved a lot more than what he just got. Completely disappointed with that. I am a huge fan of that 70s show. He was great in RoboCop. Completely wasted in this movie. So yeah, as you can tell, I didn't really like this movie. I don't really recommend this movie. I don't recommend this movie if you're a fan of the original movie or if you're a fan of the original book or even if you didn't like the original movie. This movie is probably not going to win you over. I was even disappointed with the ending because you know how in the the ending in the original, it's this big fiery epic ending with the with the with Charlie, I almost forgot her name for a second there. Charlie is just setting things on fire and blowing things up, and it was a pretty cool ending in the original. It was big, epic, and fiery, even though you can see some of the filmmaking aspects really stick out. Like when characters fly back, you could see the strings pulling them back. Like that was really bad. But that was a big, epic ending, and it was pretty cool to see that stuff. This movie, I was disappointed with that. They cut away from all the fire stuff, from all the big explosions, that, that this, the stuff we wanted to see. I don't know if they had budget restrictions? They, I don't think they could have. I mean, this is Blumhouse and Universal. But I could be wrong, maybe they did and they just, they had budget constraints, I don't know. But very disappointing with the big epicness that should have happened at the end of this movie. There's not really much more I can say without getting into spoilers. Firestarter, unfortunately, is a major disappointment and I don't really recommend it, like I mentioned earlier. If you're a fan of the original movie, stick with the original movie. If you're a fan of the book, stick with the book. I can't really recommend this movie just because of a couple good performances and a pretty decent 20 minutes in the beginning. So guys, that's my review for Firestarter. Just like always, let me know what you thought of the movie down in the comments section below. I'm actually curious if there are people that do like this movie and don't agree with the criticisms that are present in the movie. But whatever your thoughts on everything is, please let me know down in the comments section below. And just like always, guys, thank you again so much for watching. I'm going to be seeing that new A24 movie, Men, pretty soon, as well as continuing my Jurassic Park review with The Lost World Jurassic Park. Look forward to those reviews coming very soon. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and share it. Subscribe right here if you haven't already. And until next time, guys. Take care.